Hi everybody, I'm here today with Yuko Igarashi. She is an international coordinator, prenatal memory navigator, and the founder of the Prenatal Memory Global Project in Japan that she launched in 2018 with Dr. Akira Ikegawa and Dr. Masayuki Okado at the Society for Mind Body Science Annual Conference. She announced that prenatal memory can be the foundation of transuniversal pedagogy, which is the greatest global education and self-learning method to teach unconditional love, sustainable living, and to build a peaceful future for our children. Thank you so much, Yuko, to be with us today. It's such an honor to have you and the work that you're also addressing. Thank you, Susanna, and uh, it's very, very happy to be here and to talk about the prenatal memory in English because it's been talked about a lot in Japan, and uh, many people know about it, but not in English. So yeah. um, this is a very exciting moment for us Japanese. Um, yeah, I'm very happy and eager to know what you're doing in Japan, how that is influencing your culture, um, and first of all, I wanted to know, how did you get interested in this field? What is for you the prenatal memory? And here you say, you know, you founded uh, Transuniversal Otaguchi. So, so, yeah. so what is this all about? How did you get interested in this? Yes, um, the reason why I was interested in prenatal memory is because I myself attained a prenatal memory. And, uh, you know, as a child, you know, having these memories, I had a um, past life memory and also the life between life memory. I, I remember choosing my own parents. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the reason why it's different from just looking through my eyes, because I was actually looking down from like the ceiling, the level of the ceiling, and then looking down on my parents. How can you have that perspective? And I always had that in my mind and not really knowing what it was all about. And also, I had a past life memory. It's not really something that is, you know, happy memory for me. It was very, very tough one because um, I was abused by my parents in my past life, not this one. And uh, for me to be having that the vision and actually the feeling of that past life, I did not understand it as a child. And when I grew up and I found out about my, um, maybe close to year 2000, I found out about the prenatal memory. And then I thought, wow, maybe I'm having this prenatal memory thing. But I did not know what that means at that time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in 2017, so it's only about two years ago, when I found out about Dr. Ikigawa, and then he wasn't just talking about what it is, the prenatal memory, he actually talks about the real life implication and application of prenatal memory, and I was just like, it blew my mind. So then... As soon, as soon as I found out about the information, um, I had an urge to translate it and spread to you know the world. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a, a July in 2017, and I remember this clearly because um, it was my birthday. So it was a July 11th, <laughs> and um, I sent a message to an uh, uh, author um, and, uh, uh, of a book that I read. And uh, her name is Miss Cho uh, Hanako Chonan. Mm -hmm. And uh, her book was talking about parenting with a prenatal memory concept. And so after I read it and I contacted our author, and also she had an like, interview section on the back of the book. And so, I contacted them both, Dr. Ikigawa and, and Miss Hanako Chona on my birthday. And then I received the answer right away from both of them. 
and say, oh, happy birthday. And it was really a great feeling, you know, like I didn't think I was going to receive the message so quickly. And then I told them, you know, I, I'm so eager to translate this work that you're doing. May I meet you both? And they were like, sure. And uh, uh, just at the end of the month, the July 28th or so, I met them both and talked about it and said, well, I would like to translate your work. Can I do that? And then the, the first answer that Dr. Ikigawa said was, oh, Miss Yuko Garashi, do you have any contact with the publishers in the United States or any other country? And I was like, no, sir. <laughs> I don't have any contact, but I think we'll find a way. Mm -hmm. And he was skeptical because, you know, who is this crazy girl doing? <laughs> you know, what, what, what's, what's his, you know, intention? And then, um, from there on, he actually asked me to translate his PowerPoint presentation mm -hmm. and help them out with the, um, the slide uh, translated from the uh, Japanese to English. And then he took it to the Europe. Mm -hmm. And he actually went to um, uh, Finland and uh, uh, Estonia with that presentation. Mm -hmm. And so he was giving the presentation in Japanese. And a translator, interpreter, will be there to translate into their language. Mm -hmm. But the presentation itself was English. Mm -hmm. yeah. But with that presentation, I mean, it was his first English com a combination presentation, I think. And it received so well that he was like receiving about 30 minutes continuous questions from the audience. And he mm -hmm. said he never had that before. Mm -hmm because his voice was actually, you know, reached to the, the audience. Mm -hmm. And he was so excited. And, and then, since then, I was starting to like translate, you know, little by little. And then uh, we launched, uh, just like you uh, introduced me, is that um, last uh, December, I launched a um, prenatal memory global project and talked about this in Japanese at the, um, Chubu University. Mm -hmm. And uh, my plan was to talk about this in overseas location. Mm -hmm. And I was submitting the um, my, our proposal to APA. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I was giving a presentation, said, you know, I'm going to tell this to the world. I didn't even know if we will be accepted. Mm -hmm. But then we received it. Um, the, the notification that we got accepted for a presentation and so um we just came back from denver colorado from uh, uh, this year's 2019 APA international congress and gave a presentation we had a um one full day workshop and a uh, two hours breakout session and also two uh, uh film screenings and it was received so well that um, Dr. Ikegawa was almost in tears so many times. Because mm -hmm. he said um, he's been going out overseas and talk about it and even going out to the Congress, uh, conferences in Congress. But he was the only Asian. And that uh, this time was different because we had about 15 of us going mm -hmm. to the Congress with him. So he felt so different this time and that you know we're giving the presentation in English of course it's not the perfect one because um, it, you know to tell you the truth that the um, 11 present no maybe 12 because that we had a guest um, presenter um, they're all busy individuals and so successful like one of the uh, doctor dr. Ma from China she's the most popular um, natural birth practice um, doctor in China mm -hmm. actually coming to join us to do this, you know, joint a presentation with us with Japan and China. So you know, for us, it feel uh, it felt that we accomplished a lot. Mm -hmm. But about two years ago, it was only my dream, or mm -hmm. more like my, you know. <laughs> um, it was a dream. It was definitely a dream. It was a vision. 
but yeah, it was just a it, vision. <laughs> yeah, it was a vision and became reality. As you were as you were saying, Dr. Ikegawa, he he's a researcher on the field of mm -hmm. prenatal memory. And that mm -hmm. um and that comes up with the with the next question that I wanted to make because a lot of people think, you know, yeah, but children, you know, they talk, they they imagine things. I am yeah, my my child told me about that, but you know, he saw a movie. Uh how can we know for sure that this is not, you know, children's imagination? There's a, there's a mm -hmm. whole research, decades of research on this, right? Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And the uh, distinction between just, you know, being a fantasy of, you know, told by children and the actual meaning of the prenatal memory, once you start to know about how the prenatal memory is teaching us th those, um, the life, um, meaning uh, information that people start to think differently about prenatal memory and that with that the question like how babe, how can baby remember if they're inside a womb you know how do they know you know if, if it's not just the imagination the baby remembered all memory in the womb but the the memory itself is contained as a form of the light he says it's like a you know the memory of the elementary particle it's not like something that is like embedded in the brain because i mean if you're like having a conception memory there's no way about you having a, the brain right so he explains it like just like a writing the information a dvd or the cd you know it inscribes information as a form of light right so he explains that um, the prenatal memory can be explained by the quantum physics mm -hmm. and the memory is the, the elementary particle. So it's a light, mm -hmm. the form of light, and then just like a um, recording it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the, those information, the memory is actually like not, um, same as what we know, like our five senses, mm -hmm. their memory is more of like all in one in the womb. And uh, um, one of the presenters from, from our um, conference, uh, her name is uh, Yuko Tsuchihashi, mm -hmm. and she has a, she's a um, president of the uh, Children's Education Center called SCORE. And she herself has a prenatal memory and it has very, very keen sense of how it felt inside of the womb. And from, uh, according to her uh, testimony that um, what she remembers it is that uh, it's the form of a cutaneous sensation. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a womb, everything is actually kind of like having a sensation coming through the, uh, it, you know, like, uh, uh, the wave, you know, like the um, uh, the the wave of information, mm -hmm. and it's cutaneous. Mm -hmm. But once you're born out of the womb, and then it start to like your your senses will be different from the eyesight to some, you know, the hearing to the the. A tasting and it just kind of like uh, divided into all these senses five different senses mm -hmm. but baby in the womb cannot differentiate those information so um, Dr. Ikigawa says that hearing all these um, stories from children you, you cannot just go and say well it's fantasy of the children because they're they're saying like scientifically correct information so he's just taking the, the children's story as it is mm -hmm. and believing it and yeah, then and infor information you're saying that also information that can be confirmed you you were talking with me um uh about you know when was the per the first case of prenatal memory in japan mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. makes me another question that we have was um you know when do children start having these memories because mm -hmm. um there are some reports where it's you know it's two and three years old as they start to yes. express themselves well 
uh, but sometimes you told me that the first uh, recording that you had was mm -hmm. with a boy with seven years old. Do you want to talk about that? When, when did children start talking about this? Right. It, uh, most of the cases that uh, it's uh, very popular to hear those um, prenatal memory is starting around two to three years old. Mm -hmm. But when they're talking about those memories, uh, they may not be able to verbally express what they experience mm -hmm. because uh, and some kids, uh, some children may not be able to um, express what they felt because they're just not having enough vocabulary. Mm -hmm. But um, so in that case, most of the time the children will show, well, how does, how was it inside of the womb? And, and then they might just like curl up and say, well, I was like this without saying anything. So, you know, the form is different, but once they're like getting older, they develop that the way of seeing or, or remembering the same situation with their, you know, developed vocabulary that they will be able to speak more about it. And the first case when uh, Dr. Ikigawa um, found out about the prenatal memory was actually more like a coincidental he read about uh, Dr. Chamberlain's book and talked to his uh, staff member and said, did you know about um, prenatal memory and uh, the children actually remember being in the womb? And uh, uh, the one of the staff said, well, yeah, matter of fact, you know, my, my grandson has a memory. Yeah, I know. I know that story. I was like, Dr. Ikigawa didn't think that, you know, anyone would believe it. But then again, what you know the one of the staff member and it, uh, her grandchild and then found out that, that he wrote about it mm. in an essay wow. and then the essay started saying well i have this weird vision and my mother tells me it's not true but i think it is true and that's how it starts mm -hmm. and then he testifies and saying that well you know i remember being a uh, being a womb and then uh, start coming out you know it was so bright and uh, the guy with the yellow glove grabbed me from my my uh my leg and uh, when you were born i mean cesarean section most of the time the baby come out from the head right mm -hmm. but this case the, he was writing about well i was pulled by leg mm -hmm. And then the Dr. Ikigawa saw that uh, essay of the um, seven years old and asked, well, how was the birth? And the mother nor the grandmother knew about this fact, but found out that he was a bleached baby and came out the foot first. Mm -hmm. And he remembers it. And uh, that he did not like the, the fact that he was pulled by the, you know, the yellow gub guy with the glasses. How can he remember all that? Mm -hmm. Where were the senses? I mean, does, did he really see with his eyes or something more telepathical? So that was the first um, story that Dr. Higo encountered. And I think that was really significant that he was so interested to listening about more and more stories yeah do you want to you want to highlight any of the stories i'm sure that you have so many but you want to highlight you just highlight one do you want to highlight any other story that you think that are you know memorable they were memorable for you well for dr ikigawa's story there's so many of them um but you know if i could say one thing and uh, one thing only and i'll definitely say that um used to be the children said that they were like um childrens that you know in the sky on the on the cloud watching the mothers from the you know the the cloud you know watching who's going to be the mother but nowadays maybe like five years or so it started to increase more and more children saying that they're coming from the 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 universe, the, the space, the there, they're from some, uh, the planet mm -hmm. and having like a, the, the cosmic consciousness mm -hmm. and happened to be my daughter talks about that too. And uh, it's really interesting that she says she was with me when we were up in the space. That's what she says. 
And then she was with me and I was just like zipped down to the earth so fast. And then she was like flopping her hands like a wing said, Mommy, wait for me. Wait, you just went so quickly I could not follow you. I was like, okay, so it took you to get here 42 years. But I'm sure, you know, from the cosmic point of view, the 42 years is nothing, you mm -hmm. know, compared to the time over here in, on Earth. So, mm -hmm. and I have many children talking about the, like, cosmic consciousness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know it's something really extraordinary and probably, you know, more controversial <laughs> than anything else. But how can we just dismiss the fact this is all made up? I mean, if we do listen to it, it changing in many, many thousands of millions of people's lives here in Japan. And the, what is significant about this movement is that once the mother hear about the prenatal memory and the consequences, you know, of that their life, you know, they're learning about the their own life's lesson, that they they write their script before they are born, we all are writing our script before we are born and then to give it to the divine and say, okay, well, this, this is going to be my life. Is it okay? And then, the, and then the, this you know, divine will say, yes, okay, sure. And then the, the divine will say, are you going to be um, helpful for others? And then you will say, yes. And then you're coming down on earth. That's what Dr. Ikigawa says. And if you say no, apparently they held back, mm -hmm. not being able to come down on earth. So he says that every single person on earth has a good intention that we are trying to create a better world. But once we attain the physical body, it's kind of hard to, you know, go with a plan. Mm -hmm. And that the, you know, even though we write, say, well, yes, I'm going to be choosing this, um, uh, like a disease, like, you know, I'm going to have an incurable disease. Oh my gosh, that looks so fun. You know, for, from the, 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 um, prior to birth, when we we're in the source, when, when we we're still, uh, in the zero point field. If you, if you want to talk about it in the quantum physics world, that the emotion on earth, like, you know, the sadness, happiness, anger, and all that commotion happening on earth looks so appealing. And even the negative feelings, what does it feel like to be punched in the face? What, is, what does it feel to be kicking around something? You know, how does it to feel broke, uh, breaking the bones or, um, so everything seemed to be very, very exciting for, you know, being in the, like, a, you know, the realm of the soul. Yeah. In the point, in the point of view of, of, um, many people, and I'm, I'm sure for some viewers that are watching us, they would think, you know, how would someone, you know, would like to have a bad story of, of life. But if you think about this in terms of, you know, coming into university and having high expectations about what you're going to achieve. And then on the long run, because you probably will have four years of study or you have six years, in, you know, in the new universal uh, center sets, um, you know, you never know what it's going to happen. You know, suddenly you start a subject and then you think, oh, but this is more interesting than that. Mm -hmm. Or you thought that this was going to be, you know, the right way and then it turned to be, you know, awful and you had a horrible experience when you were in your, in your, in your university. And some people come out of it, you know, stronger and some people start to think, well, I think I need to do my degree again because it just didn't work for me. This time. Mm -hmm. So right. uh, it is it is good to have the analogy of you know we uh, what what happens what I may say in the that's my perception that what happens in the cosmic uh, mm -hmm. world as we, as we can say or or uh, you know the expectations that we have or the sensations that we have uh, they are also here so it, mm -hmm. it's not like we are you know different from what what it is when we are not on this body. 
but um, you know, if you think about this as a learning process, mm -hmm. we also go through struggles here, even when we think we are going to do our best and it's going to mm -hmm. turn all right. And sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, so that's, it's, so that, that and, and I think that now when you're telling me, you know, children are now having this, this consciousness and this calmness, cosmic consciousness and not talking more about that. I think that also humanity has raised its own consciousness and that mm -hmm. also helps children to mm -hmm. uh, talk about it. Uh, because yeah. these are children that are talking about it with, you know, spiritual parents, no spiritual parents at all, and they're still having the same experience and talking about the same things. Um, you know, uh, children that have never learned about what cosmic mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. right. force or, you know anything and they and they are still talking about it so how can we just be glad and say no it's not possible mm -hmm. even the scientific process is about you know confirming that you know if, if it, this is happening for so long oh well maybe there is a reason there is a, a process to it so let's let's research and 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 check out what is going on so that's why mm -hmm. I think memory and the and the field of prenatal memory is so fascinating because there's a lot of that we already know and still so much so many things that we still need to need to understand so in your perspective why do you think that prenatal memory is is so important and how how is this concept being received in your society and in your culture what is the impact that it has mm -hmm. well so the first 10 years or so, um, like I mentioned earlier, that uh, it was very difficult for the Dr. Ikigao to talk about, even talk about the prenatal memory because everybody just so against it. You know, they, they didn't really receive that well. I'm just saying as you know, just as you said, you know, fantasy of children. How can you believe that? But what has happened from then was that when the mothers hear those stories and the meaning of, their life and what what i mean by it is that dr ikigawa has been seeing the uh, patients because he's an ob doctor and he recently stopped about two years ago a practice of um delivering uh, the birth process but he's still taking out patients nowadays so he's still seeing the patients so he has a time with the mother or the small children or the you know the baby in the womb in uh 40 years or so and then he encounters so many, you know, lives and also the death of the children. And that um, what happened was that, say when, um, when someone wants to have abortion and Dr. Ikigawa says, well, I will do an abortion, this is the surgery for you, but you have to talk to your baby first. And then, you know, most of the case, the mother is very desperate to have this procedure done because they cannot, you know, many, many different cases, you know, having different reasons why not they want, they, they cannot have a baby. So, you know, when they go home and, you know, start talking to the baby, it's like, you know, I have to have this surgery done for you. I, I cannot have you. And then sometimes the baby say yes, sometimes baby say no, but most of the case, the baby say yes, you know, you can have abortion. And so then coming back to the clinic and then have a procedure done. Uh, he says that's the only condition that he will have an abortion surgery. And he, there was one case of the mother who could not do that, could not talk to the, the, the baby because just, she just didn't think that's the right things to do which means she's not ready to have a abortion, right? So he says it's really to learn about the lesson. And the baby perspective, you know, the point of view is that a baby is not born at their birth. Um, from the concept of a prenatal memory, mm -hmm. the conception itself is already a birth. So it's, he, he explained it like this, um, some baby goes in to have like field trip, you know, day trip to experience what does it feel like to be in a mother's womb for a little while and go home to the, the light. 
and others stayed around and to be born out, you know, to the earth and then to experience physical reality of it. But just being in a womb, say, even for the, you know, few hours or, or two weeks in a womb, is enough experience for the baby to take back, take back to this uh, source as they're overriding the information. This is what he says. Uh, we're here on earth to overwrite our information on our soul because we're trying to uh, become a better person, become a better soul. But in order to do so is for us to experience all the emotions on earth to become a better person and then to feel that happiness. And so that once you know about those uh, information, uh, he encountered many stillbirth. You know, it's very difficult for the mother. And most of the time, the, the mother feels that it's something that they've done caused the miscarriage or, or stillbirth. But from the baby's perspective and knowing the baby's perspective, um, he, he works with the, the lady who can communicate with the baby in the womb. Mm -hmm. It's like a baby whisperer mm -hmm. and then receiving the information and so that the mother feels more comfortable about, you know, their situation. And he's been doing this practice for years. And, you know, the message from the baby, it's just, it's just pure love for, for their mother. And, and it definitely gives the mother to learn about you know, how precious the life is all about. And those mothers who are receiving this information, they start to be the change maker. Mm -hmm. They're the one actually holding the events and showing the prenatal memory of children, the, the film, or to have a lecture done by Dr. Ikigawa because they themselves receive so much that they wanted to give out to other people and, <laughs> and I think some, some, some people even have you know the, the children with the disability physical disability or maybe having a learning disability and those mothers I'm sure they're having a handful you know the life of their own but they are actually going out to the society and saying, well, look, listen about the prenatal memory because it's changing my life. It's really comforted me. Now I want you to know about it. And I feel that it's like a social movement mm -hmm. more than anything else. And mm -hmm. I, right after I announced the, um, the prenatal memory global project in English, I'm receiving the the messages from the you know many different countries about i think i have, I have about 11 different countries now mm -hmm. and asking about this and then you know well what you're doing is so wonderful this is you know this is something the world needs to know it's like i don't really need to explain much people are already receiving my information because they feel that cosmic consciousness i don't need to really tell exactly what it is i mean of course it's helpful mm -hmm. but of course. Mm -hmm. the source of information is mm -hmm. i feel that we are sharing the same feeling the, the feeling that the cosmic consciousness and unconditional love yeah i i see i see that uh also that more and more uh, women are willing to understand that and in some ways Mm -hmm. um, it just um, hits them. It's a button that uh, it got switched on. And that uh, a lot of times because, you know, concerns uh, of work or even concerns of just human survival, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to survive in this society, it yeah. has been shut off. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can, um, I can relate this even, you know, back to the 60s, back mm -hmm. when... Uh, um, uh, women were told that their milk was not enough for their babies, that actually formula mm -hmm. was much better mm -hmm. than actually their own milk. So right. 
so we had this um, this culture of you know what is from women it's not so good and we know what is best for the babies and now we have more women and more women coming forward and saying you know I have a feminine um, side of me I have a sensible a maternal side of me and I have a wise um, wisdom inside mm -hmm. and so suddenly this this subject of prenatal memory prenatal education prenatal psychology just makes a lot more sense to really understand even the behaviors of children um, mm -hmm. and also how important it is I have I have sometimes in my work to tell women it is okay to have anxiety when you are pregnant you are doing everything for the survival of your baby and if you were on the wild you, you better be anxious about what was in the environment in and out just to make sure that this baby and I are going to survive this so um, uh, during pregnancy even anxiety gets, gets higher because of that and they don't understand and they think you know I'm just worrying about something that I shouldn't No, you should you should and it is okay so a lot of the emotions that we have as women are okay to have mm -hmm. and, in, and even when you are pregnant you know there's another being inside of you that it's constantly communicating with you mm -hmm. and helping you through the mm -hmm. process so women should not feel that they are alone so when mm -hmm. we come now with prenatal memory and you're telling me you know they are the ones that are changing society yes they are the big ones that are changing society and they are inspiring the life that they have inside of them and their babies are perceiving that change is possible. Mm -hmm. And when babies perceive that, they are going to be the ones also changing society. So I think that, uh, yeah, I also feel that um, the world is waking up. And as there is, um, you know, now so much uh, on the news about ecological consciousness that has right, been right. wrong for decades, for decades. And now it's there in mainstream. I think that the field of you know cosmic consciousness, prenatal consciousness, uh, it's it's again going to be a field that it's got, needs to be there, needs to be on mainstream, so that women perceive that it is important. They matter. They are not being lazy. They are pregnant, and they mm -hmm. should take time to mm -hmm. understand these things and to you know as they are going to take time to be with their babies when the babies are outside. They should take time to be with their babies when they are inside. Right. When they are inside. That's that's the big change that needs to happen. It's not only having you know time for your baby out. It's about having time for your baby in. That's when everything everything mm -hmm. starts. So as as you are saying, you know there is a change. It needs there needs to be a change in your society and in, also mm -hmm. in your culture. But uh, but women couples are much more open than they were decades before. Yeah. Um, uh, we could also talk about you know you're talking about um, uh, what you are doing there in Japan. And I remember when I had an interview with Dr. Thomas Fernie, he was saying. You know, Susanna, I was talking about this back in the 60s and I had one or two people in the audience and now everybody is there to hear me. But, uh, and he was the father of, of prenatal psychology. Yeah. Yeah. See, so that he's also seeing, seeing so many changes. So mm -hmm. the environment of the mother and the womb can actually affect the baby inside. And mm -hmm. what does that have to do now with the science of epigenetics? Do you want to talk a little bit about yes. that? Yes, yes. So we talked about how the changes um, brought in Japan. People did not receive it so well for about 10 years. And then people started gradually accepting the fact that there's a prenatal memory. And nowadays, about 70 to 80% of the pregnant women already knows the concept of prenatal memory that's how widely spread but it does not mean that they know all the implications of the prenatal memory they just know that well yeah baby know has a memory inside of the womb but that's a start i think having about you know 70 or 80 percent 78 percent i think that dr ikigawa said in exact number but having that so many people aware of the situation 
I think that is the reason why that many people are deceptive about the prenatal memory and also trying to listen to the children and how they're talking about it. And I think it used to be more of a curiosity. You know, what, what was it? You know, how did it like? But for the children to talk about the prenatal memory is pretty difficult because they have this huge database, you know, about nine months or so being a womb, and you were asking the child which information you wanted to pull out, you know, from this huge database. So if you just say, well, how was it like to be in a womb? They're like looking at this huge database and saying, I don't even know which one to say. Can you be more specific? Mm -hmm. So if you, if you give the children the purpose, you know, the why, why you're trying to ask about the prenatal memory, and they start to talk about it more, you know, more clearly, but just by saying that, you know, broad, you know, saying, well, how was it in the womb? is not really pulling their answers. So from that um, sort of um, time, and then the nowadays things are changing because uh, according to Dr. Bruce Lipton, you know, I, I love him so much, that um, the mind and the environment control genes, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know about the epigenetics, but, in order to stop the six mass uh, extinction, we must change our thought by creating a collective consciousness, aiming at starting a spontaneous evolution as a brand new single organism called humanity. So we humans need to be having this collective consciousness in order to stop this mass extinction. And I feel that the prenatal memory can actually be the part of the change. The reason is because I believe the combination of the art and the prenatal memory, because it has to be something that you feel. Um, you know, it can be any form of art, you know, it could be dance or songs, or it can be a, um, drawings, anything to do with your senses, with a combination with that, to a prenatal memory is a key to change the physical, emotional, spiritual environment. Because, I mean, it's so easy for us to say, listen to the music of your, you know, your choice. If you have anything that you want to listen to and you have a favorite artist and, you know, in front of you, performing for you, wouldn't that make you happy? And that, sensation itself is changing the environment mm -hmm. so i feel that if we are changing our perception and that we're more tapped into the consciousness that we can actually create this change mm -hmm. because i feel the consciousness is the environment <laughs> So, and, you know, I, I think that um, we are teaching children to know about, like, you know, the philosophy of things, you know, the reasons and teaching them, like, prenatal education, you know, like, tr trying to teach certain ways. But I think the prenatal memory is not doing that at all. We're not putting, we, we're not uh, placing the rails for for them to be like you know stride on it was more of to guide them with like aesthetic like in you know, the feelings of how it is for each individual because it's something that it makes me happy it's not made for you to feel happy mm -hmm. i mean it changes in each individual yeah so there so, is there is a uniqueness there right. is a uniqueness. So this is not about saying that, you know, you are doing it wrong, you are doing it right. It's not about that. It's defining your own uniqueness, the things that mm -hmm. make you feel good, the mm -hmm. things that sometimes, you know, you have to change to make you feel better. And mm -hmm. to share those experiences with your baby inside. So this is actually, in a way, changing the way women and couples perceive their own pregnancy, right? Mm -hmm, right. And also, once you're conceived as a child, 
have a change the memory, you know, the form of the 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 uh, elementary particles. And so the in you know, a quantum physics, you know, they theorize that our mind does not reside only in our brain. Mm -hmm. You know, it exists inside of the field. Mm -hmm. So if we're to actually understand the connection of the field mm -hmm. in our mind and the consciousness, then we can definitely change, you know, our mass extinction because we ourselves are going to be more responsible for what we do in action. That's my explanation. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And and the, as you were saying, you know, perceiving that the mind is not just here, it's not just this body, you know, and our energy is, and we know this, you know, when we touch our hands, we can feel that it's hard or that it's cold mm -hmm. uh, when they are closer together, but then actually need it to be touched. Uh, we know that there is energy around us and uh, and perceiving that, you know, our own consciousness is also on that energy. Mm -hmm. and uh and that you can you know sometimes pick up oh i was thinking about you and you just call me right mm -hmm. so there there are things that we can pick up in the same way that when the baby is the womb that is also happening already so it's right. not right. only about you know the body sensations and this this uh, five senses sensation but also what what the consciousness can perceive um mm -hmm. and and how what do you think that a, that a mother should be aware of when she is communicating with her baby inside in this important moment of her life? Well, um, Dr. Ikigawa and Ms. Yumiko Tobitani created this program called the Quantum Birth. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because um, it is a class to teach the pregnant mother how to communicate with a baby. And it's the it's to um, gain a sense of like a telepathic ability. And uh, so, you know, I'm sure all the mothers experience like, you know, when you're pregnant, you just feel like you're going to want to eat something that is, you know, something that you would never eat or, you know, something that like uh, there are many cases in Japan. I, um, Dr. Higar hears that the um, baby wants to have McDonald's. Like if the mother knows that it's not really good for the baby, but it's like you know you're craving so much that they go out to eat the McDonald's. For my case, um, I have a 25 year old son and a five year old daughter, and when I was pregnant with my 25 year old son, um, all I wanted to eat was a steak, and I don't usually eat meat, so you know. But I was having so much craving, and now we eat, and it just makes me sick so that I have to, you know, <laughs> I, I cannot, my, my body cannot take it, but my baby wants it. It's, that's how it felt like. And I'm sure there are many people feeling the way. And the Dr. Ikigo says that's the type of communication the baby is trying to tap into the mother's, you know, the emotions and feelings. And that uh, once you're trying to develop that communication, and to, to have that, like a, when a baby started kicking around, moving around, that's when you can start communicate with the baby more you know, easily because they will respond back with the, you know, the movement. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, um, I think there may be people talking about this like communication with a baby inside the womb, but it never had a correlation between the prenatal memory and that concept of the prenatal memory. Mm -hmm. So I know that Dr. Ikigawa hasn't done much of any, like, you know, English writing that he could show to the world. So I'm hoping that in the coming year or so that I can uh, display more and more example of how it is and to, to talk about different fields of information because he has a lot. <laughs> I don't know where to tap into it because mm -hmm. I feel like I want to have more, like, um, question so that i know how to answer it because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. there's so much are and there any uh, it, is there anything you could that you would like to share with us in terms of slides or anything that you that oh. we're talking about that you would like to share with us more sure um, okay so i'm going to talk a little bit about like scientific point of view of the prenatal memory um 
Do you know about the overview effect, Susanna? No, no, okay. I, I've heard about it, but let's talk a little bit about that. That was okay. great. Yes, yes, I'll, I'm going to explain about it. Um, on December 7th, 1972, the crew of the Apollo 17 called the Earth the Blue Marble and brought back this image, as you can see right here, the, uh, the, the, of the Earth, image of the Earth for the first time. And uh, this guy on the, the right-hand corner, he's a Frank White, and he says that the astronauts experienced enlightenment and transform their consciousness when they saw the beautiful Earth from the outer space. This cognitive shift in awareness is called the overview effect. Mm -hmm. and he suggested that those experiences the astronauts are a crucial message from the Earth to save humanity. And this is a quote that I like to um, I like from uh, his uh, Mr. Frank White. We, we are on the space uh, spaceship Earth. We're the crew. We need to work well together as a crew of Spaceship Earth. And maybe we're not doing you know, good, good job of that right now. But um, so the, the astronauts go out to the space and then they have this common feeling, common sensation. And there's the three of them uh, I'm listening here. It's experiencing it all. And the self transcendence, and the perspective and identity. So, you, you know, the, the, when the, the, the astronaut goes out, out of the space and looking down on Earth, they feel this the common feeling that uh, they want to protect the Earth. They need to do something about it because the, 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 the Earth has a thin layer of the, the, the air just covering, but it seems like it's so fragile. And the, the Frank White says that by knowing this knowledge, the overview effect will be able to save the humanity. But the fact of the matter is that there's only 558 people went out the, um, what they uh, defined by the, um, defined by the International Air Federation as of April 2000. 2017, only 558 people in 38 countries. I mean, compared to the, the population in the world, it's just like really the slightest percentage of the people. And so how can we get this word around and uh, have the people understand this concept? So I felt that the cosmic consciousness and prenatal memory will be very helpful because when the astronauts looking at the earth and having an overview effect, I felt that the, with the knowledge of the prenatal memory, the concept of the prenatal memory, we'll be able to look down, look inside of our consciousness to have this inner overview effect. Because mm -hmm. the, the astronauts are going out and physically experience this overview effect. But I feel that the consciousness, if we, can, if we can consciously think about our existence, our soul, and the, the reason, purpose of being born on this earth, we can have the inner overview effect. And I don't know if you are aware of this, um, there's five types of prenatal memory. Yeah, definitely. I had, a, I had a chance, and I have here their book, I had the chance to interview uh, the authors mm. of the Babies Are Cosmic, it's, it was a wonderful uh, interview. Yes, yeah. yes, and uh, um, so the, the Dr. Elizabeth and Neil Common mm. um, define as a, there's a definition of five different uh, type of memories. Um, as of Dr. Ikegao's explanation, he divided into the nine different categories. It's more uh, precise memories, but this is definitely a good to, to um, give an explanation. And then, you know, is it fantasy created by children in imagination? I feel that it is a gateway to understand the consciousness. It is to capture children the pristine knowledge of multidimensional experiential aspect of their inner life soul. So once you're trying to, you know, having this um, 
inner overview effect happen to your your consciousness i think we'll be able to shift from the children talking about the fantasy to the um having a pristine knowledge of the, the cosmic consciousness and uh i think that's that's um one section of it and um what i can show you oh uh, there's so many different way of um expressing the prenatal memory like um i would like to um show um the comic book there's a um the professional comic book artist she actually listened to a daughter talking about the prenatal memory and you know maybe you can look at it later uh, mm -hmm. i'll show you the the link and everything but uh she started sharing this um her um comic on the instagram and uh, some of them are translated but not all of it but like she started to capture the the story of her daughter and sharing it but um anyway that i want to show you the second one and the red circle indicates that's when she started to talk about the first stories of the prenatal memory and then that happened when they were in the bed you know just you know like a, just spontaneously asking so how does it feel like you know how does it feel to be inside of the womb and then she explained well it was dark and you know i was i was like a, um floating around and things like that and i think the art bringing this the fact i think it's easier for people to get an acquaintance with yes yeah please. and uh, and then you know this is uh, her instagram um uh address and like uh, maybe i can show some of the um what i show at the congress uh mr saito he uh his daughter's story has been captured in many different books and mm -hmm. then one of them is a baby so cosmic and uh, his daughter is very very unusual you know from the the you know the, the, the uh, development of the baby i think it is she um ayaka uh, no uh, ayako started to talk uh, around one month of old i think that's pretty unusual right mm -hmm. and saying the word okacha which means mommy at one month old and uh so she started to like talk about things and like um thank you when she was like four months old and she started to talk to this like invisible being around seven months mm -hmm. and she um used a dinner card and like drew a script on the wall mm -hmm. and when the father asked about the, what she drawn on the wall you know instead of scolding at her i mean they were living in an apartment you know they have to return to the condition where it has to be you know clean as it is right but a daughter drew um with this picture on the wall and instead of like you know scolding he said so what did you draw on the wall and then she started saying well this is the fetus and this is the ovum and this is the sperm like in the medical term in japanese mm -hmm. of course Mm -hmm. But that was when Ayano was uh, one year and 11 months old. I think that's pretty amazing, fascinating. Yeah. And then, yeah, um, so, so, you know, drawing like this and the, like she even drew this picture and saying the birth canal here, uterus here, um, sperms here, and it, uh, to, it's three years old, uh, three years and four months old. Mm -hmm. And she's already grown up and uh, adult now, but um, she does not remember any of the stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I asked uh, Mr. Saito about her story, he found, uh, he told me about he had a conscious uh, conscious conception. So the as a couple, they were like talking to the spirit prior to pregnancy and saying that you know uh, for the 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 perfect match of the soul to come to the the, the couple mm -hmm. 
and so then went through the conception and all that. And uh, um, do, um, Ayano had, and uh, Ayano's mother had, um, uh, uh, what, what is it called? Um, like a bleeding, pretty, pretty heavy bleeding during the pregnancy, mm -hmm. and found out that uh, it could be a twin and lost one of the baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, this Ayano remembers about uh, the experiences during uh, uh, being in a womb that happened, the heavy breathing happened. And she said that it was really like tightening on my neck. And then all of a sudden it felt relief. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and she was talking to the invisible being. And then I just had a feeling that maybe the, the she's been talking to this invisible being which is the twin sister mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she lost in the womb and this uh, ayana has been a perfect child and never been in the problem like you know the father describes her as being the perfect child mm -hmm. but the one time when she was like 17 years old had a breakdown only once and said that daddy do you feel like you're only person and then he didn't know how to answer it, but he said, yes, I feel I'm only one person. And she said, I feel like I have another person inside of me. And mm -hmm. I feel that that was indication of the, the um, vanishing twin syndrome, mm -hmm. but not in a severe way. It's just really the slightest case. But I felt that maybe that, she was grown up, brought up so perfectly because she was always guided by her twin sister. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I thought that was very um, amazing. Another person, um, Megu, she is a single person, never had a child, never been pregnant, but came up with this, um, this picture book. And I actually um, talk about her book at the... Um, you know, the um, conferences and lectures and stuff, stuff like that. But she has this like cosmic, cosmic vision of the child coming to, you know, choose, choose the mother from the sky, up in the sky. And uh, I loved her story so much that I translated into English. And I'm hoping that it, it will be translated in many different languages because I think this touches everyone's heart i mean if they know about the prenatal memory yeah, and definitely. Been, so it is in japanese and english right now mm -hmm. and it, it is um uh translated now in the serbian and hopefully it's going to be translated in chinese and the greek at this point we're, we're going to put up this this links the things that you're talking about i know that you have okay. links to all of this we're going mm -hmm. to have it on our uh, channel so that people can relate not only uh, to your work but also with the wonderful resources and this is one of them wonderful resources mm -hmm. that people can look to right, now, right. I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you um mm -hmm. what are what is the future of the prenatal oh. uh, memory uh, global project that you are into that you founded so what is your vision what you what what are, you, what are you doing? Um, are there, you know, are you thinking about conferences? Of, of course, you want to spread awareness. Um, what, what is your vision now for, for the future of, of, your, of your project? Yes, and I would like to talk about um, everyone get involved with the prenatal memory. They will say what they, what's their um, goal for their mm -hmm. life. They will say world peace. Mm -hmm. They want to create a better, better place for the children. And that's the first and the foremost. And um, I think that's the part of the reason why they all are trying to spread this concept. And the, the Dr. Ikigawa says that, first of all, we all need to know the baby attains the memory, that they know things from the, the womb and that you will be able to communicate with the baby inside of the womb. And that's the, that's the, the, the most things that he wants to tell the world. And uh, he knows about many cases in Japan, 
but now he hasn't really gone out to the, the overseas and to actually receiving what it is like yet. So he wants to receive, you know, many different like uh, comments and suggestions or questions because um, he does not know too much of the, you know, the cases in the world. But as it stands, I think the um, Dr. Carmen, they are talking about about 25 countries um, um, showing the, the uh, prenatal memory maybe in the scripture or the, the, the um, books or so. And he added three countries. So it's about 28 countries, people are talking about prenatal memory. Mm -hmm. But he wants to spread that out more, even more. But for now, when he's going out, you know, to the, uh, like he goes to the Singapore or like Taiwan, China, um, Indonesia, and, and uh, um, European countries also, and to listening to the people's stories and it seems like there's not so much of a difference between you know just because of in the different cultures people sharing pretty much the same concept in in their you know their cultures and uh he, he feels that um we all need to remember a prenatal memory because even our life seems so difficult to deal with at some time that it all our responsibility and how we can take in and understand so that we can move forward with our life mm -hmm. because they all has a meaning of the, the learning of our soul and uh, what we want to do in the prenatal goal, uh, prenatal memory global project is that um it's getting to the point, it's very exciting that um, um, Miss uh, Eiko Ezaki, mm -hmm. she is taking this prenatal memory movement further down to the education for sustainable development with the prenatal memory. And uh, so she is collaborating with the government agency to spread the concept of prenatal memory. And uh, um, what she's doing is to create the applied psychology of Dr. Thomas Gordon's parent effectiveness training, PET, with the prenatal memory. And what she says is that these two are so powerful together that like even the abusive parents are in the audience and when they receive that concept and understanding the both the prenatal memory and the uh, PET, that they immediately stop the abusive behavior mm -hmm. towards their children. And that this is so um, this is so important because um, maybe just talking about the prenatal memory cannot stop the abusive behavior. But once the parents understand our soul's, like, like heaven's decree, that what we are coming on earth to do, uh, what's our mission in life, once we're, we're fully understand and aware of it, with, a, of course, the, you know, the, the, the psychology, the parents' behavior changes. I think that's very remarkable. Yeah, it's and, very powerful. Yes. And so with this movement, um, Dr. Ikigawa's vision is to talk about the prenatal memory at the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And this is like one of his uh, goal right now. Mm -hmm. And then we're trying our best to reach that high and talk about it to the world. We're not there yet, but I feel that we might be getting closer to it. Mm -hmm. So um, we're existing in this physical body, yet we're attaining the quantum wisdom in that uh, we all can be sharing this wisdom, cosmic consciousness, and to impact many nations because uh, this cos cosmic consciousness is going to bring people together 
because we need to resonate. Yeah, definitely. I think humanity needs more and more to be aware of it. More and more mothers, it will help them on their, on their um, work of building the new generations. So mm -hmm. the future of new generations. So I think all of these concepts that you've just talked about is, again, giving a wider vision of what is creating humanity, what is, you know, building up new generations and how can we, you know, raise the consciousness of humanity in terms of, you know, the way that conception is perceived, pregnancy and mm -hmm. the early stages of, of the oh, education okay. of children. Mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. you were and I forgot to mention about the trans universal hutagogy part. Can I go over yeah, to yeah, that? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, anyway, so the Prenatal Memory Global Project is to advocate the family. It's key to unite humanity, acquiring cosmic consciousness, and shattering the boundaries of borders, races, languages, culture, and social human cognitive framework. Because I think it happens to every single human being on Earth. I mean, even if you are not going through the birth process, you come out of mother's womb, right? Mm -hmm. yes, so, it, yeah, we were, we're all sharing those experiences. So the prenatal memory global project is to learn prenatal memory, fertilization, birth, and parenting is the most profound and effective way to bring peace on earth. And uh, I would like to talk about the trans universal hutagogy. And I'm sorry, this is not an animation, mm -hmm. but the pedagogy on the left side is actually to, to uh, pedagogy is the art of science or profession of teaching. So the, the, the teacher will be giving an instruction and, and, and then to, to do the form of learning. At, uh, in the middle, andragogy is a self-directed learning. And hutagogy is self-determined learning. So it, the two, going, going to the right, it, it takes more of the um, responsibility of the, the, the self-learning process. And the pedagogy is like more of a given by someone else. And then and the um, differences between these learning principles is simply for the hutagogy learners learners highest maturity and autonomy will be required and it, it requires less instructors control and course structures uh, course structuring is required because they can take their own learning and their own seat and so I think the prenatal memory does that because simply the fact that every single person's point of view is different and so it's not a pedagogy. It, it cannot be taught by someone else. You have to learn on your own, or on your life and life story. And in trans university pedagogy, I think the prenatal memory is the greatest global education method and the foundation of self-learning for creating a peaceful future for our children. I made up that word anyway. <laughs> but anyway, so the you know it's the learning the prenatal memory can create a contribution for society as we are the consciousness reformer. And prenatal memory experience can train us to strengthen awareness level of our consciousness. And also prenatal memory itself is the greatest way to learn about life on earth. And uh, you you asked me the epigenetics earlier. The turning biological switch with prenatal memory. I can show you the quick, quick one. Um, quick one. The mind and environment control the gene. So how do we change the environment? We need to change the, the our thoughts, the consciousness, and like I mentioned earlier, art and prenatal memory is the key to change our physical, emotional, and spiritual environment because that's when we feel. Mm -hmm. feel the, the differences and uh, this um world of sensitive centered philosophy um this uh mr shifu yoshimura has been talking about the importance of the aesthetic and feeling the spirituality part needs to be as equal as to learn about the intelligence and, and reasons and uh um this is the um uh Ta Taka mr takashi taneichi has this um, theory called parasite fermion theory and that uh, he talks about our soul exists 
as a fermion in the multidimensional field. And uh, um, this is really a um, quick look at it and saying that uh, we have we're, we're having a connection between this the realm of extra dimensional space with our physical body. And like you see that um, right here, the PFO, the, the connection. When, when we're attached to it, we're alive. It's like, you know, the soul is remaining inside of the body. And uh, it does not matter of the development of the, the brain because it, you're just having the consciousness inside of this um, parasite fermion. It's like, you know, outside of our uh, dimension. And once this connection is gone, is that we experience the death. And then once we're, say, coming back again to other body is the explanation of the re reincarnation. So, um, you know, that's the part of the reason why we, we can talk about the, the um, prenatal memory in this way, because uh, the memory is not inside of the brain. It's inside of the extra dimensional world. It's like a soul, you know. And I think, I think, um, here's my point though. Um, oops, the future of epigenetics. Every human thought gets to be broadcast into the vastness. We need to be in resonance. It's like a tuning fork. Yeah. <laughs> if we are all resonating in the same vibration, same frequency, I think mm -hmm. we'll be able to change the the world, you know, more peaceful and harmonious. And this is my, you know, the last slide. Are you with us? So thank you so much. I think we're we're finishing then with the with the slides and and with the interview also. I think it was such a wonderful talk to have and um, I will probably make it in two parts so that people can watch one and then the other because it was so extensive and so knowledgeable knowledgeable about so many fields that you're working on um i wish you all the success and we'll keep in touch you. to you know to know what the activities each other are doing and we're going to put up you know the links so that everybody knows what uh, what you are doing and how the project is going yes thank, thank you, you so much it you. was a wonderful time thank to you. have with you from the other part of the world yes <laughs> Thank you so much, and I hope we'll see each other soon. Oh, yes, we sure will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.